What is up, Rosby Josh? In today's video, we are diving into the rebalancing that just hit World of Warships news. If you guys have been keeping up with the dev blogs, you know how many changes are coming to World of Warships. We're going to dive right into that. As Zumos, if you have them, if you're grinding through them, it might get a little bit better because there are some big, big, big changes coming to World of Warships with this massive, massive rebalancing. So there are some pretty big changes coming to both the IJN and the German battleships, one of them being the Azuma, which is... Uh, probably looked at being one of the worst, if not the worst, uh, battleships at Tier 9, depending on who you ask. I think Freddy and the Azumo probably fight it out, but the Azumo is getting a buff. That armor plating on the deck is getting increased from 32 millimeters to 57, so that's going to really help Plundium Fire and just that pure alpha damage hitting it um, going down. So that's it's going to help that ship a lot, being able to tank. Now the front nose, you'll still be able to smash a little bit, but overall, just the alpha damage in general, more shattered HE shells, more... Uh, uh, shattered uh, AP shells, you're still going to have a chance to maybe survive a little bit longer and make that ship work for you. Surface detection is getting dropped by over two kilometers, so making it even stealthier. That could be pretty nasty, setting up that third turret, which tends to be a bit of a problem and uh, could potentially help you do a little bit more damage, which tends to be a problem with that ship because of the lack of survivability. Surface detection when fire and smoke is also getting dropped. It's going to happen with the detectability, and the changes will allow the battleship to receive less damage from enemies, cruisers HE, and chains visibility, which would make it more competitive. I still don't think it'll be one of the... I still don't think it'll be anywhere near the top. I mean, it might actually... It might surprise me. I still think the, the true leaders are going to be near the top. The Missouri, the Iowa, um, the Alsace... Uh, maybe hold that one for a second and um but still it's going to make the zoom a lot more competitive and we'll see once this goes live how well it does and uh increase the average lifetime of this ship which tends to happen a small buff to the Yamato. Now, the Yamato has completely, if you saw a video a few weeks ago, I made a video about how the Yamato has been completely power crept over by battleships, kind of left in the dust, although it still has its spot in competitive play. And um, it's getting a small buff here from two and a half to three. Um on its turret traverse but what's going to end up happening is uh the rotation of the turret traverse is tends to be extremely extremely slow what this is kind of doing in my opinion is with the new legendary upgrade to the yamato which makes the yamato more accurate for giving up turret rotation so the slow turrets even slower it's kind of just going to balance that out so this is a nice little buff to the yamato and with the legendary upgrade do we see the yamato potentially becoming the best tier 10 battleship uh, as a battleship we'll see We've gotta wait for it to go live and see how how big the effect actually is the Japanese battleship Ashitaka, the Tier 7 Premium, in my opinion, is one of the worst, if not the worst, premium battleships, just purely because it's Tier 7, it's going to cost a little bit more, and for how kind of bad the ship was itself, and before somebody's like, I love the Ashitaka, it's amazing. Um, it basically was a a, a hall uh, Amagi that was in Tier 7 as a premium, kind of following the pattern of the Mutsu at Tier 6 compared to the Nagato. But anyways, the, the, it's getting some buffs, which it kind of needs. It needs something to make it a bit more competitive. It's actually probably one of the least seen ships, actually, in World of Warships premium-wise. AP shells here are, re are replaced with a shell. Um with the following characteristics so it's basically getting a, a better trajectory and also doing more damage so that's kind of nice it's going to be a bit more like the amagi so if you played the amagi you'll like the ashitaka and uh, it'll make it uh, um, more damage because it has inferior kind of armor kind of like glass cannon builds wow 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 the kawachi is getting buffed great it's a tier three you get through it in like five ten games anyway but hey it, people still play it there you go the miyogi probably one of the bane of the of the lion's existence Probably the worst battleship on the line, the Miyogi, if you've ever played it, you know what I'm talking about, um, is getting a buff to its reload, as well as the main battery, as well as its Sigma. So, some low-tier buffs there. I, uh, you know, I don't get too excited about low-tier buffs because they're low tiers. You tend to get through them relatively quickly. Um, but still, there's some buffs. These ships are kind of mediocre at best. And um, they're going to be a bit stronger there. I always I always get a little bit worrisome about low-tier ships just because of the potential of people going down and seal clubbing, blah, blah, blah. Again, we'll have to see once this goes live um, about how big of an impact it is. I don't think the Miyogi is going to be taking over the Nikolai spot or anything like that. But the Miyogi won't hopefully be as painful people going through it again. Um, also, the Nassau, uh, the Tier 3 German battleship is getting a bit of a buff. And... Um, Oh, the main battery was increased from 22 seconds. So it's getting a bit of a nerf, actually. Sorry. And the number of repair changed from 3 um, to 2. So it's actually getting some some more nerfs. There you go. And, um, and yeah. So uh, a lot of changes come in for some battleships, mainly IGN, and then some of the low-tier stuff. But the Azumo change in the Ashitaka is cool to see, and we'll see what happens with the Yamato. 
Now, Pan Asian DDs, this is one of my favorite lines, if, if not one of my favorite lines. I think it's one of my two favorite lines to play right now. Um, they're getting some balance changes. So this has been something that's been talked about for a little bit longer for American and Pan Asian DDs. This is for the USN and um, the Pan Asian. Uh, AP shells of 127 millimeters. Um, guns, the fuse sign will be reduced from 0.03 to 0.01. This change will make it more efficient to deal alpha damage to destroyers and cruisers. So it, fast firing, we'll see what ends up happening um, with how strong this is going to be. I felt like the kind of the DD AP was pretty solid. I mean, if it didn't give you an angle, it's gonna be kind of tough, but you're gonna wanna stick and try to force a repair anyway with HE. This is gonna be something that's kind of interesting. Are we gonna see a lot more AP coming from these two ships? I'm not sure. Um, tend to be with a destroyer, you want to force the repair so you can get a flood, especially with the Pan Asian destroyers with how strong, their, how strong their torps are. But a little buff to an AP, especially destroyers. Destroyers, this will be really interesting and in going against cruisers as well. We'll see what ends up happening with this. This is kind of an interesting trade uh, or interesting move here. Um, takes the buck on the US Sun Cruiser Seattle and Buffalo with the Sigma parameter. Now the indicator. Um, is 2.05 instead of 2.1 and then the Sigma parameter bug for the American cruiser Baltimore has been now fixed Now the value is 2.0 instead of 2.05 So a small little move there nothing too crazy and then the American battleship South Carolina the Sigma is increased from 1.8 to 1.9 So it seems like they're kind of trying to balance out low tiers I think there's a lot of other stuff going on right now that they could be spending some time on Conquerors still in the game um, but hey, they got the uh, the low tiers under control and everything will be good for the low tiers coming soon. Nice little balance battleships down there. For the Russian ships, Russian destroyers and cruiser Chapayev. Now this is actually kind of cool. Uh, we'll get to the Chapayev at the bottom, but Soviet destroyer uh, Nevi and Mince um, increase the speed of the rotation of the main battery. These tend to be extremely slow, these turrets. I didn't even really like these ships, um, honestly. Uh, same with the Podolsky getting changed. So a lot of the uh, faster reload uh, or the faster turrets for those um, degrees per second. So it, it's getting increased, which means it's getting faster. So that's kind of nice. It's just a quality of life thing for those DDs. You're still probably going to want extra marksmanship, so it's not going to be anything too crazy. But if you are playing those and you enjoy playing those ships, first of all, you're a weirdo. I'm just kidding. Uh, but they're going to be a bit better to play with, um, especially with the mints going from like the old Kiev to the mints was always a tough one to sell. I'm um, going to reduce the load time of the main battery from 8.1 Lepidovsky to 7.5. So there you go. It's going to be a nice little competitive. Uh, the Soviet modules and still with the Soviet destroyers, tier 2 to tier 4. Increase the speed of the rotation of the main batteries. And there you go. So faster. Soviet destroyer, the Tashkent. This is a ship I've been playing a lot recently. Um, is is the tier 9 quote-unquote torp boat. You have three sets of 8-kilometer torps, which actually reload very, very, very quickly. Um, is getting the... Uh, uh, the module from the uh, Kavarovsky edition will make uh, moving along the tech tree more logical because it was kind of weird that automatic, that randomly you went from kind of having this torque boat to the Kaba. Um, it almost seemed like the Tashkent and the Udaloy should have been switched. And, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. The changes um, uh, for the tier 10 ballistics, the changes increase the combat effectiveness of the Soviet destroyers, leading them to balance with their classmates. And basically, it's just kind of a buff for the Tashkent. So that's kind of cool to see. Um, we'll see a little bit more. So that means more Russian torp or more Russian gunboats out of something that also has some torp boats to back it up. And then the Chappie buff. I don't think this is too crazy. Um, this is something that was always kind of uh, maddening is the a hall on the Chappie didn't have radar. And it seemed like if you get a radar ship, you should just have radar. I know people are going to be like, no, more radar, more radar. I think overall, this is kind of nice to have. I think it's the only ship in the game that's like this. Or the a hall maybe i don't know yeah i think it is I'm trying to quickly if it's wrong let me know in the comments below if there's anything else like this but the chappie as soon as you get the ship you have radar consumable it's kind of unfair for a lot of chappies that were going through the ship to start out without it and then get <laughs> being yelled at by your entire team for not radar in the ship so russian ships um a, the mid tier is getting a bit of buffs the tashkin getting a buff which is more like the kaba and then the chappie getting radar at a hall now for Royal, uh, Royal Navy ships, the British ships, there's lots of changes kind of coming here and a lot of people are kind of excited. Um, change the range of the British Torpedo Mark uh, 7 installed on the cruisers Emerald, Leander, Destroyers, um, Gervais, and Icarus. Range increased from 6 to 7. Now there are some work in progress still uh, ships here, so obviously these are things that are kind of sub to change, but since the dev um, released it, we can kind of talk about it. British cruiser the Emerald, service section reduced from 11.5 to 10, so they're going to a bit stealthier, which I think is fine. I think the Emerald is pretty mediocre on that line. I always say the line kind of starts at the Leander, the tier 6. And the service tech ability um, after shooting 
in smoke, 5.4 to 5.6 is going to follow the change. And um, the average life. So they're kind of just trying to help these ships that are basically are underperforming. Um, and then uh, removed uh, researchable, removed the consumable engine boost. The change is intended to emphasize the role of defensive, relatively slow destroyers. So these are interesting. Slow destroyers tend to be boring destroyers because they get hunt down and killed destroyers. <laughs> so, um, and that's kind of funny because the British destroyer, the Lightning, which again is still a, uh, a work in progress ship that I know of at least. Uh, is going to be kind of slow. <laughs> so it's kind of weird that way. Fix the bug, incorrect parameter of the reloading main battery. The indicator was reduced from six to five. Uh, the COSAC, which I think was, which must much needed nerf. I don't think it was quite enough. I think it equals out to be about, it was at 5.1 kilometers now to 5.5. Um, I still think that's pretty low. That's just a 10th of a kilometer over the, the Kegaro with a full concealment captain and module. And um, that's still pretty nasty at 5.5 but it only has a one torp reload we'll see how it works i wanted it when we were kind of giving our feedback i wanted it about 5.6 um but still sorry ign captains you're still gonna get picked on by the ship because it's gonna be way faster than you and it's gonna absolutely wreck you well not super fast but it has tools to hunt you down the angles of the guns on the ships may matter were changed so um what was the one thing about the cosec is the back turret really had a tough time um getting to you so uh now basically that the turrets are better <laughs> so it's even stronger now what it had was kind of the weak turrets in the back now basically I have a chance to hit you so the cosec still a very questionable ship to me i don't know why it's quite like this it's a weird pattern to come for destroyers and um we'll just see this is something we're gonna have to see next time we get a chance to test it again this is a lot of work in progress stuff they're talking about so i, I could see a lot of this stuff changing and um we'll see what happens once it goes live now front ships this has been a big big uproar for a lot of people and with it being one of the big battleships the alsace um but uh the french cruisers of henry a test variant of the ship will be added so this is kind of interesting and to my knowledge this is going to be a brand new consumable it's not going to replace anything is the main gun reload booster so we saw this on uh releases with the jean bart um the uh the french battleship the premium battleship that uh, you get a reload booster so yeah another another consumable to misclick when you want aa or boost but um has been added a reload time of main caliber to negative 50 percent so what it's going to help you do is it's going to help you basically pump out a shit ton of damage in a really really quick amount of time you'll basically get three salvos out in 15 seconds so that's pretty nutty when you know how hard a henry can hit you could but I don't even know, potentially dev strike a battleship if you're hitting all your AP salvos and you do this. It, it's some pretty insane damage output. Um, the cooldown is uh, is pretty nutty right here as well. Um, and so a temporary boost of a small period of time, the main re reload and fire a final salvo. So careful for Henry's. They're going to be extremely strong. Um, French battleship, the Jean Bart, which a lot of people are excited for. Again, still work in progress. I'm, I'm not going to put it up on the video or anything like that since this is still something they're talking about um but the uh the tier was raised from eight to eight to nine and this is something that's kind of making it questionable for the next change the ship's characteristics are changed to match the tier of the new ship sigma parameter is increased from eight point or 1.8 to two which is actually pretty accurate the reload time on the main battery is reduced from 30 to 26 interesting that's pretty it's pretty nutty and then parameters of the consumer repair part has been changed uh increased from one to two and three to four cooldown um reduced from uh 120 to 60 on the repair party so this is the weird part right here the jean bart which got moved to tier nine and then the tree tier nine ship the alsace uh is getting nerfed to the ground it seems like it that was a fan favorite for a lot of people a lot of people like this ship it's a very fun ship and um, it was overperforming. That's something we can all agree on. Uh, it, it, it's an extremely good ship. It can tank pretty damn well. It could pump out a ton of damage. The secondaries are out of this world. And they have increased the reload time from 30 seconds to 20 seconds and reduced the valued value of Sigma from 1.7 to 1.6. Now, the whole thing about the French battleships is that they fire extremely fast for battleships, but they are smaller caliber. So with that nerf, smallest caliber shells or some of the smallest caliber shells at that tier now are going to be one of those slowest reload doesn't make much sense um reduce the value of sigma so in my opinion what they should have done is just gone with the lowered sigma make it make it less accurate but still leave it relatively quick 
Um, the ship was a rather high average damage rating. It's true. It was it was a very overperforming ship, but it seems very weird that they're nerfing the tree ship and then making from what looks like the the premium tier nine god tier. So we'll see. I haven't even. Yeah, we'll see what happens with this. This is a complete shock to me. Um, I thought the all says was in a decent spot. I just needed a small a small change because it was just overperforming compared to all the rest. Um, but having this, the looking at the Jean Bart, which is the tier nine premium or, you know, how, however they're going to end up doing it, um, compared to the tree ship, it seems kind of weird that they're going with this way. Uh, and to keep the, the video going, I don't want this video to go too long guys. So I'll try to speed up the French cruiser. Um, uh, Emil is getting some changes as well. It's tier five who blah, 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 blah. Um, I'll put some links down below. You guys can check this out and you can dive a little bit more in, but it's getting some buffs. IGN DDs. Now this has been something that people, a lot of people are interested in is these quote-unquote gunboat destroyers, Akazuki, Kitakaze, Harugumo, um, Harakaze. Um, what they're going to end up be doing is the Kitakaze and, of course, the Harugumo are both, um, are both uh, still work in progress. Akazuki and Harakaze are in the game. The armor penetration uh, parameter was increased from 50, uh, 17 millimeters to 25, which basically means that you don't really need inertia fuse anymore. And a lot of people are super, super excited about these, um, about these ships. Like, they're getting the buff. Oh, man, check out this buff. You don't need it anymore. So you're basically getting an extra four points to play around with the captain's skill, which is kind of nice. Um, but you're kind of losing some, uh, it's, it's, some nerves are coming along with it. So I'm interested to see how this ship still performs, um, when it's, when it's going through, because it's, you're getting a higher detection because of it. You're adding two tenths of a kilometer detection for this. And then, uh, detectability range after shooting. Uh, I mean, that's still going to go up as well. And then you're getting slower rudder shifts. So we'll really, really see what happens with this. It seems like what was only a captain skill you're getting uh, nerfed uh, decently for. I mean, you have to have some kind of trade-off, but still, it seems like the nerfs, in my opinion, aren't really worth the buff. But we'll have to see how this plays out. Maximum speed of the Kitakaze getting buffed from 33 to 36. That's a work in progress ship. So a ton of stuff could change before that. And finally, to finish this off and to wrap this video up, Stalingrad changes. Um, shell velocity change from... Uh, or basically they're changing up kind of the entire ship. We had two versions of the Stalingrad, which we got to play on stream, and it seems like it's going towards the second one, um, which had the HE. It, was, it used to be an AP-only ship. Now it has an HE version. Uh, firing range is reduced from almost 23 to 20. Uh, 23 kilometers to 20. The reload's getting increased. Uh, main battery's getting slower. So this is still a ship that I haven't tried out. We're going to have to check it out. Um, this said the parameters of the disper dispersion are similar values of the Graf Spey. Um, the tier six, which tends to have pretty mediocre dispersion and it was too accurate before. I think that ship is, is completely weird. I'm interested now though. I wonder if the mosque was just a better ship than the Stalingrad now. And is it even worth getting the Stalingrad? I got to get my hands on the ship before I can make a, uh, a whole thing and a whole, uh, issue on this. I need to play the new version of Stalingrad to see how it feels. The ship before was just crazy good. And this, I feel like, is just a little wonky, too. Um, it just seems like they're kind of nerfing it to, to just nerf it down. It needs it, but I don't know if this will be the right nerfs for it. Um, but anyways, this is going to be the high steel ship. But anyways, guys, lots going on. There's also a uh, the ring going on for commanders, where commanders are going to be able to battle it out and uh, be able to battle it out and then kind of challenge each other or do these challenges and potentially get in-game. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to end up doing it. But uh, there is a potential that I might. So who knows? I'll let you guys know in the future. Honestly, it seems like it's kind of set in stone who will probably win this. But um, it might be kind of fun just to go along and see what we can do. Maybe get Winston's face in the game. We can try our best. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. I tried to keep this video short, but there are just so many changes. The rebalancing is happening in World of Warships. Um, I'll put a link down below to the dev blog. You can check it out yourself. And again, want to keep you guys up to date on what's going on. And these are probably hope probably go live at seven point uh, the next patch which is probably be next week and we'll end up seeing what's happening anyways guys want to make a, this video as short as possible lots going on hope this video helps you guys keep up to date and that's it for me guys hope you guys enjoyed this video remember like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time